Welcome to Living Faith from the Russellville Christian Center. Planting the seed of truth and growing families in the Word of God. Go with me to Galatians chapter 3. We're going to talk about the why. All the world, pretty much, all the world knows that Jesus died on the cross. They acknowledge it. I mean, it's, it's, it's history. That part is really not disputed. The resurrection's disputed, but Jesus dying on the cross is really not disputed. I mean, uh, lots of uh, the historians, Josephus and different ones, uh, recorded it for us uh, from a historical perspective that's not even in the Bible, but it is recorded in history uh, of that he died. But the why is what just really kept coming to me strong this morning. Yes, I died for you. Yes, I was resurrected. But let's talk about the why. Galatians 3, I'm going to start in verse 1. I'm reading out of the NIV if you have a device. He says, you foolish Galatians, he's writing the church there, who has bewitched you? Before your very eyes, Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed as crucified. He's like, you saw it. You saw it. So who's messing with your mind? Who's messing with your mind? I would like to learn just one thing from you. Did you receive the Spirit by observing the law, talking about the law of Moses, or by believing what you heard? Well, the truth is, we believe Jesus, we have faith in Jesus Christ because of what we've heard. We didn't receive our salvation by the law of Moses, we didn't have to keep all the law. Jesus redeemed us from that. He fulfilled the law and redeemed us from the curse of the law, which is what we're fixing to read. So the answer here, if you don't know the answer, is that they, they got the Spirit by believing what they heard. Verse 3, are you so foolish after beginning with the Spirit? Are you now trying to attain your goal by human effort? Oh, Oh, mm, man, do we, do we trip up on this one. Human effort. We, we tend to fall back under um, performance-based provision. God, I should be healed because... But God, I've done... But God, I've been... And you can fill in the blanks. And, and he's, he's getting on to them here. The apostles, he's, he's laying it out there. Are you so foolish to think that you can attain your goal by human effort? Have you suffered so much for nothing? If it really was for nothing, does God give you his spirit and work miracles among you because you observe the law? Or because you believe what you heard? Whew, if that's not a faith message, I don't know what is. How are you going to receive and work miracles among you? Because you believe what you heard. What did you hear? Consider Abraham, verse 6. He believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness. Understand then that those who believe are children of Abraham. Oh, we've been studying covenant for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks. We've been studying covenant. Last week, we, we, was it last week? No, John taught last week. And wasn't that good, by the way? We, when we, we talked about Mark 5, when we talked about the woman, and, and, you know, the question Jesus asked the religious bunch when they said, hey, what are you doing healing her on the Sabbath day? He said, ought not this woman being a daughter of Abraham... Be loosed from this infirmity on the Sabbath? And that daughter of Abraham said, Hey, she has rights. She has covenant rights. Do you understand what you just read here in Galatians? 
Those who believe are children of Abraham. That means when something comes against your body, you have every right to say, do you not know that I am a daughter of Abraham? Do you not know that by what I believe, I am a son of Abraham? Do you not? I know my rights. Devil, you may not know my rights, but I know my rights. And this doesn't have a right on my body. Because the blessings of Abraham, they're mine. They're mine. And, and what we've got to get away from, and I realize we have a lot of new people, and the people that have sat here for 40 years are going to go, yes, yes. But I need to rehear it. Because sometimes we lay down and take what's thrown at us without a fight. And we're supposed to be fighting the good fight of faith, which means by, because we believe, we're supposed to stand up against these things. Right? We're supposed to take authority, take back that authority that Jesus came to give us back. Verse 7, that those who believe are children of Abraham. I'm telling you, we start studying covenant, every com everything. You just see it everywhere. Verse 8, the scripture foresaw that God would justify the Gentiles by faith. That was you, the unbelievers, the outside of the covenant ones. The Jews were in covenant, the Gentiles were outside of covenant, but that changed with Jesus Christ, and now we are covenant because we believe. He justified the Gentiles by faith and announced the gospel in advance to Abraham by saying, all nations will be blessed through you. So those who have faith are blessed along with Abraham, the man of faith. All who rely on observing the law are under a curse. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who does not continue to do everything written in the book of the law. Clearly, no one is justified before God by the law, the law of Moses, because the righteous will live by Good, y'all are still here. <laughs> the righteous will live by faith. Just say this with me. I will live by faith. I will live by faith. Now whether that means live over sickness and disease, whether that means live in your marriage, whether that means live even though you've been through a divorce, if that means live even though you've lost a child, if that means whatever that live means... You will live by faith, by what you believe. The righteous will live by faith, verse 12. The law is not based on faith. On the contrary, the man who does these things will live by them. If you're going to live by the law, you're going to live by the law. Or die by the law. Christ redeemed us. Christ redeemed us. From the curse of the law. See, the law wasn't all bad. Actually, the law wasn't bad. It was a covering until Jesus could get here. It was a good thing. It was the only covering available. And God made it available for mankind to walk under that umbrella, if you will. But the only trouble with that umbrella is if you stepped outside of that umbrella, the earth might swallow you up. I mean, you can ask some of the people in the Old Testament. They can, they can tell you the earth opened up, swallowed them up. So, you know, there was this human performance that, that, was, that was, it was based on until the blood of Jesus Christ could be that sufficient sacrifice uh, to make us right in the eyes of God. And so when they would step out from under that, y'all, I love the Old Testament. I love to read about it. But we are under a better covenant. Amen. I'm thankful for those people. I love reading about them. I admire them. They're, they're heroes to me. But I am so thankful to be under grace. Grace. Jesus came so that the why, the why is so that we could live under grace. That we didn't have to live under the law. But we could live under grace. And that doesn't mean I go out and do whatever I want to do. 
In fact, it has the opposite effect on me. Because Jesus died for me, it changes me. His grace changes me. Where did I get to? I don't even know. Thank you. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law. He didn't redeem us from the blessing, by the way, of the law. He didn't redeem us from the blessings. You can go back and you can read the curses and the blessings. He didn't redeem you from the blessings. He redeemed you from the curses. The blessings still flow because the blessings of Abraham are ours, right? Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. He became cursed for you. Because you were cursed. Because the curse was on sin. And you had the sin nature. Jesus became the curse for you. What you deserved, Jesus took in his own body, his own mind, and his own spirit. What I deserved, he took. He became a curse for me. For it is written, cursed is everyone who is hung on a tree. He redeemed us in order that the blessing given to Abraham might come on the Gentiles. Now you might have been born Jewish and you might be a descendant of Abraham in your bloodline. I wasn't. But the blessing of Abraham came on me through Jesus Christ. When I accepted Jesus, I took on me. He took my curse and I took on me the blessing. Make you want to go back and read the Old Testament. I'm telling you, it's some good stuff. He redeemed us in order that the blessing given to Abraham might come to the Gentiles. And you can go back to Genesis 12 and kind of start reading about Abraham and the blessings that were pronounced on him because those are yours. This is through Christ Jesus or Jesus Christ, King James Version says, so that by faith we might receive the promise of the Spirit. What God promised, you can receive by faith. You, you, can, you cannot walk in the blessings and the provision that was promised to Abraham if you do not believe in Jesus Christ. If you do not make him your Savior, your substitute, your Lord. Did I say that enough ways? Because it's not just about believing that he was. The scripture says the devil believes and trembles. The devil is not saved and the blessing is not on him because he believes that Jesus is. He knows Jesus is. But it's when you've made him the Lord of your life that everything changes. Redeemed. What a beautiful word. Redeemed. It's not one that we really use that much anymore. And, you know, this week as we focus on the sufferings, the crucifixion, the death, the, the payment made by Jesus, and then the resurrection, and we start evaluating the, you ever have the why me's? This is a great time to have a why me. Most of the time our why me moments are pitiful moments. This is important. You got to know why. And I want us to reevaluate that why. It, you know, it's very noble that somebody would die for you. I mean, I've, Rusty would die for me. We thought something was on the roof last night. I think he would have gone out there and shot whatever it was and ended up, we have redneck neighbors, we're rednecks. If somebody was shooting something loud and we have a metal roof and it just sounded like somebody was walking on the roof. But, you know, Rusty was going to go find it. He would die for me. My mom would die for me. My dad would have died for me. My children would die for me. Tanya would die for me. That's probably about it. But that's pretty good. It's a pretty good, uh, pretty good group of people. And, and not everybody can say that, so I'm blessed. But, you know, it's noble when somebody would die for us. But what would come to your mind if somebody died for you? Why? Why me? Why would you die? Why would you die for me? Jesus had good reason. 
He didn't leave, he didn't leave the glory of heaven and come down here and live as a man in this earth, in this world. And we have problems now, I understand. But please understand, they had problems then too. I mean, you can go back and read some Sodom and Gomorrah and some stuff. It was pretty rough back then, Noah. They had some rough stuff to walk through. Jesus came to this earth. Why? Because your redemption was worth it. It was worth it. He redeemed us so that the blessings of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through faith in him. And when you go back and you start in Genesis 12 and you start reading Abraham and you start reading about the blessings and everything that, that God promised him and that told him would come to pass through him, that continues on through us. Redeemed. You want the Greek, uh, the Hebrew word for it or the Greek word for it? This is the Greek one, I believe. Yeah, this is Greek. I like this word because it makes me think of exaggeration, which means, this, folks, this is, you hear this and you think this is just too good to be true. But it's spelled E-X-A-G-O-R-A-Z-O. Don't ask me to pronounce it. I'll be like, Bubba, Wednesday night, there's just some, some things I'm not meant to pronounce. And if y'all missed Bubba Wednesday night, you need to go online and listen to it. It was fantastic. Um, it, this is what redeemed means. Purchasing a slave from the slave market with view of his freedom. That's a good word. I've been redeemed. I was held captive to the sin nature. I didn't have any choice but to sin. You know, we get mad at sinners sometimes for sinning. Do you know that's... There's no other way. He redeemed us. He, he saw us on the slave market. And he said, oh no, that one right there. I'll buy him. Right, Sammy? I'll buy him. But he didn't buy him to enslave him. He bought him to free him. That's redeemed. That, may, that is such a beautiful word. It also means to rescue from loss and to improve opportunity. You know, your marriage changed when you got saved. You know why? Because you changed. Now you have opportunity. Your job changed when you got saved. Now you've got opportunity. You've got improved opportunity. Every area of your life with your children, you've got improved opportunity. In anything you can think of, your health, you have improved opportunity. You have a, you ha your chances are dependent on your faith. That went over great. <laughs> we're not just rescued, we're legally purchased and your old slave master has no right in your life in any area of it not your thoughts not your soul not your body not your spirit there is no part of you that Jesus did not pay for because when he suffered basically from the time he was born suffered in the flesh through shame, through wrongful judgment, you name it. He suffered in his soul. Before the crucifixion, he suffered in his body. And in the crucifixion, he certainly suffered in his body. Not often do people talk about how he suffered in his spirit. But we're talking about a man who was born spiritually alive. That's why we had to have the virgin birth. He was born spiritually alive and died spiritually for you. Uh, the scripture says that he was the firstborn among many brethren. And that's when he was resurrected. He was born again. His spirit was made new and right with God. And, and he was, so he was born again. We were dead spiritually. So when we get saved, we are born again. Right? But he suffered in the spirit. Can y'all... We got time. Go with me to Psalm 22. You know, there's so much... You remember that in the volume of the book, it's written of Jesus. And so many times in 
different characters' lives when they're speaking. It's prophetic words of Jesus. You'll see that as we read. You'll recognize some of this. I just, I don't know that I'll read the whole thing, but this is so, this is a tough read, y'all. I'm not going to lie to you. But it's, it's what Jesus went through, and you're the why he went through it. And so that makes me want to know what he provided. And you'll see that he was physically, which we often study as we're studying the crucifixion, the soulish end we even talk about, but even spiritually, there was an attack on him, a satanic attack on him, because he was, he, he was in your hell. He went there for you so you don't have to. We get to go to his heaven. And so you'll, you'll hear that as the psalmist is speaking here. It says, Psalm 22, start in verse 1. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? You ever heard that one before? Well, of course you, of course you have. That's what Jesus said when he was on the cross. So this was written way before Jesus ever hits planet earth. These words are written, picturing what Jesus would go through. You can find Jesus saying it in Matthew 27, verse 46. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me and from the words of my roaring? Oh my God, I cry in the daytime, but thou hearest not, and in the night season, and am not silent. But thou art holy, O thou that inhabitest the praises of Israel. Our fathers trusted in you. They trusted and, the, and you did deliver them. They cried unto thee. Can you hear Jesus talking to himself here as he's suffering? They cried unto thee and were delivered. They trusted in thee and they were not confounded. But I am a worm and no man, a reproach of men and despised of the people. Why? That's the question of the day. For me. For me. All they that see me laugh me to scorn. They shoot out the lip. They shake the head saying, He trusted in the Lord that he would deliver him. Let him deliver him. Seeing he delighted in him. Do you remember when they did that to Jesus on the cross? Let your angels come rescue you. Right? Verse 9, But thou art he that took me out of the womb. Thou didst make me hope when I was upon my mother's breast. I was cast upon thee from the womb. Thou art my God from my mother's belly. Be not far from me, for trouble is near, for there is none to help. Here comes this spiritual aspect of this that is so intense. Many bulls have compassed me, Strong bulls of Bashan have, have beset me round. They gaped upon me with their mouths as a ravening, ravening and roaring lion. I am poured out like water. You can put down John 19.34 when water flowed from him. And all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted in the midst of my bowels. My strength is dried up like a potsherd. And my tongue cleaveth to my jaws. You can read that in John 19, 28. And thou hast brought me into the dust of death. For dogs have compassed me. The assembly of the wicked have enclosed me. They have pierced my hands and my feet. I may tell all my bones. They look and stare upon me. They part my garments among them and cast lots upon my vesture. You can read that in John 19, 24. But be not thou far from me, O Lord, O my strength. Haste thee to help me. Deliver my soul from the sword and my darling from the power of the dog. Save me from the lion's mouth, for thou hast heard me from the horns of the unicorns. Don't ask me about that. Study it. I will declare thy name unto my brethren. In the midst of the congregation will I praise you. You that fear the Lord, praise him. All ye the, the seed of Jacob, glorify him. And fear him, all ye seed of Israel. For he hath not despised nor abhorred the afflicted or the, the affliction of the afflicted. 
Neither hath he hid his face from him, but when he cried unto him, he heard. My praise shall be of thee in the great congregation. I will pay my vows before them that fear him. The meek shall eat and be satisfied. They shall praise the Lord that seek him. Your heart shall live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn unto the Lord, and all the kindreds of the nations shall worship you. For the kingdom is the Lord's, and he is the governor among the nations. All they that be fat upon earth shall eat and worship. That doesn't mean fat, fat. All they that go down to the dust shall bow before him, and none shall keep alive his own soul. A seed shall serve him. It shall be accounted to the Lord for a generation. They shall come and shall declare his righteousness unto a people that shall be born that he hath done this. When you go back and spend some time meditating on Psalm 22, you will see the work of your Savior. And when I see the work of my Savior, it reminds me that I'm free from everything He suffered. I have a legal right to be free from everything He suffered. And, and this is where we get confused sometimes as Christians. We start looking and we start saying, it's like we're, we're fighting God to be healed. Or we're, we're, we're trying to talk God into helping us with our mind. God's not our problem. He's our Redeemer. And so who, what are we fighting? We're fighting the old master who's trying to come back and enslave us like he has some kind of rule over my body. Like he has some kind of rule over my mind. Like he has some kind of right to my past when it's been bought up. It's been bought up. So that's what we fight. We fight our own heads and we stand against the enemy who is a defeated foe because Jesus already kicked his tail in the heart of the earth. He couldn't hold Jesus in the heart of the earth. When, that, when your junk was rightfully paid for in the eyes of God, when the scale of justice had been tilted, and, and your sin, your sin nature had been paid for. And God said, that is enough. I would love to see the moment that that happened. And Satan and all his demons who thought they had Jesus held captive in the heart of the earth. And the Holy Spirit flies in there like he did on the day of Pentecost. Goes in and makes Jesus' spirit alive. And then the words, because he's righteous, he's, the, everything else has been burnt off of him. That your sin nature has been covered, it's been paid for. And that is done. And then the Holy Spirit comes in and he's born again. You can't keep born again in hell. There's not enough power in hell to keep born again in hell. And then the, the promises of Deuteronomy start coming to your mind. That I'll be the head and not the tail. I'll be above only and not beneath. Wouldn't you love to see that moment? Maybe someday we'll get a big screen in heaven. And we can go, we want to watch that again. Because the scripture tells us, in the book of Revelation, that someday we'll watch Satan be kicked into the lake of fire forever. And we will look at him and we will say, is that it? Is he the one? He's nothing compared to your Savior. Nothing compared to your Savior. We are legally purchased, not just from something, but we have been delivered to something. We have gone from fear to faith. 
because we believe. We've gone from torment to peace because we believe. We've gone from death to life because we believe. We've gone from guilt to righteousness because we believe. We've gone from sickness to health because of what we believe. We've gone from unhappy to joyful because of what we believe. We've gone from hell to heaven because of what we believe. We've gone from lack to plenty because of what we believe. We've gone from torment to peace because of what we believe. And we've gone from heaviness to joy because of what we believe. He went through all of that heaviness so there could be a lifting up. And when we have heavy times and our mind tries to go dark. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, me and Sharon. <laughs> we have a right to say, not today, Satan. Amen. Yeah. Not today. Not today. I read Psalm 22. I saw what Jesus went through. That was for me. And when you go back and you realize that that was for you, you'll find a way to come out of it. He paid what was due us. All of this was not without purpose. The why was you. <laughs> the why was you. For this moment right now that you're going through, or the moment you went through last year, or the moment you're going to go through next year, the why was you. It's to deliver you from the curse of the law. To deliver you to the blessing of being justified by faith and all the blessings that are consequent to you being righteous. Just go through some time. Look up the word righteous or righteousness and see all the blessings that are due the righteous. He came so that word fits you. It fits you. It fits you because he gave it to you. He said it was a gift. He didn't say you earned it. It's because of what you believe. It's because of what you believe. And that'll change everything. Oh, do we have time to do this? We do. Thank you. Hey, Sharon's going to talk to me. If y'all don't talk to me, Sharon just gave permission. If y'all got lunch cooking, you should have answered. She's my amen corner, and Bo's not here today to amen me, so. I'll tell you what, y'all stand up. Let me just pronounce this on you. You know, Deuteronomy 27, the Levites, uh, the priests, were stood on two different mountains. And one was Grissom, I don't know that I'm saying that right, but it's close. Not Grissom, <laughs> Grism. And the other was Ebal. Is that right? Yeah. Ebal. One was a flourishing mountain. The other one was barren. And the people stood in the middle in the valley. And the priest stood on those two mountains. He divided the priest up. Had certain ones on each mountain. And they began to proclaim the blessings and the cursings. And the people got to choose. You remember what he said? Choose this day. Choose this day. You got blessing or cursing? You got life or death? Therefore, choose life so that you and your... Yeah, you and your descendants, your seed, will live. In fact, he said, choose life so that you and your seed will live. So what you're choosing... When you make Jesus the Lord, when you realize what all is in that, what all is in you choosing him, you have become the seed of Abraham and the blessing of Abraham rests on you. What does that mean? You need to study what does that mean? What all is in the blessing of Abraham? And, and you can look and see what Jesus paid for and you can see what a lot of that is. But you get to choose Health. Could it be that simple? And I love what Bubba taught Wednesday night. I'm telling you, you need to go listen to it. You can't watch it, but you can listen to it. Basically, we choose and 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 we keep choosing it. I choose 
I choose. That was his message. I choose. The Lord thy God will set you on high above all nations of the earth. And all these blessings will come on you and they'll overtake you. Blessed shall thou be in the city and blessed shall thou be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of the body and the fruit of your ground and the fruit of your cattle and the increase of thy kind and the flocks of thy sheep. <laughs> now, if you don't own sheep like me, if your husband won't let you have any, know this, this is your work. If you don't have cattle and you don't have sheep, you have investments, you have work, you have rentals. He's talking to you right here. Blessed shall be the fruit of your body, that's your kids, your, the fruit of your ground, the fruit of your cattle, the increase of your kind, the flocks of your sheep. Blessed shall be thy basket and thy store. Blessed shall thou be when you come in, and blessed shall you be when you go out. And you study that out, that's not, that is you leaving home and coming home, but it is also state troopers, Amen. officers of the law. I mean, this is people that go out into dangerous territory. You will come back home. Amen. Our military. Amen. The Lord shall cause thine enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before your face. They shall come out against thee one way and flee before you seven ways. The Lord shall command the blessing upon you. The... You think something happens when the Lord commands it? The Lord shall command the blessing upon you in your storehouses. And in all that you set your hand to. You know what my storehouses are? My investments, my bank accounts, your barn if you've got hay, if you, I mean, your gardens. The Lord will command His blessing, I receive that, Amen. on your storehouses and all that you set your hands to do. And He shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God gives thee. The Lord shall establish you a holy people unto himself, as he has sworn unto thee, if you will keep the commandments of the Lord. Now, this goes back to the Old Testament. You're under the blessing. All the people of the earth shall see that you are called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of thee. And the Lord will make you plenteous in goods, in the fruit of thy body, the fruit of thy cattle, the fruit of thy ground, in the land which the Lord swore to give you. The Lord will open unto you his good treasure. I wonder what all that contains. I can tell you from New Testament that he has given you everything, the scripture says, that pertains to life and godliness. And that he will withhold no good thing from you. And don't get panicky. I'm not talking about being greedy and hoarding here. I'm just talking to Scripture. Solomon had to have silver dumps. I'm not offended by that. Religion's offended by that. I, I'm not. The Lord will open to you His good treasure, the heaven to give the rain unto the land in His season, and to bless all the work of your hands, and you will lend unto many nations, and you shall not borrow. That was just so weak. Amen. I'm telling you, being debt free is, you don't, have a, you don't have a master over you telling you when you have to work. And how much you have to make. And what bills, what you have to do with your money when you have not, when you're debt free, you're a, you're a funnel for God and he could say, give here, give there, give here, give there. And there's nothing hindering you from doing that. So you need to get a little more excited about this part of the blessing. And I know if you've borrowed, you know, you kind of want to go, eh, just get out of debt. Use this 
blessing. Put it on your mirrors. Say it over yourself. We lend. How do you lend? There, there's several different ways. You will lend unto many nations, and thou shalt not borrow. And the Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail. You will be above only. You will not be beneath. Now, we're not going to have time to do it today. Mom's done this before. It's excellent teaching. But I want you to go down to verse 15. Sometime this week, it's way longer than what I just read you. And read the curses. Why do you need to read the curses? So you know what you're redeemed from. You may just tell you just a few of them. This is just... Well... Cursed you'll be in the city, and cursed you'll be in the field, and cursed will be your basket, and cursed will be your store, and cursed will be the fruit of your body, and cursed will be your flocks, and, when, and cursed you'll be when you come in, and cursed you'll be when you go out. It pretty much goes through all of that. But then he starts talking about uh, diseases, fevers, inflammation. Why not? Because you're redeemed from it. And you can go in there and you can say, hey, whoa, this is listed under the curses. And I've already read Galatians 3.13. I've been redeemed from the curse. Amen. I've been redeemed from the curse. It talks about captivity. It talks about plagues. It talks about bulls. It talks about sores. It talks about tumors. It talks about adultery. It talks about divorce. It talks about your relationship with your children. It talks about children that you're not able to see. It talks about your heart longing for your children, but there's a separation between you and them. That's under the curse. Amen. You're redeemed from it. And if you don't know you're redeemed from it, you're not going to have faith to believe for these things to change. It talks about being servant to other people and being in captivity. There are 68... The curses are listed from... Deuteronomy 28, 15 to verse 68. There's a lot of things you're redeemed from. There's a lot of things you're redeemed from. Why? Because Jesus wanted you free. God wanted you. You were his why. You were his why. So why are we living under things that we don't have to live under? That he paid for us to be free from. I, I want families mended to the best they can be mended. Children and parent relationships whole, healed, people's bodies healed. This has been Living Faith from the Russellville Christian Center. We pray that this message has uplifted, encouraged, and motivated you today. You can find us online at rccenter.org or visit us at 305 Lakefront Drive, Russellville, Arkansas.